Hello, this is Shad Sluter, and we're going to work on the homework assignment for this week on the class for 215, Digital Logic and Design at Grand Canyon University. What you see on the screen here is a description of the assignment. We're going to write a script in Python that will take a, a regular logical expression using T's and F's and logical symbols, and we will reduce the string until we have exactly one letter left, a T or an F. And so I have some notes on the screen that will help us design the program and then I'm going to show you some strategies to get you most of the way there so you can build your own and then you'll have to finish it solving some problems that we'll leave undone. So first of all let's look at the description here. So the program says we are going to use the regular collection of symbols using the AND and then the pipe symbol will stand for OR and then the tilde will be the NOT symbol. And so our algorithm is going to be this. We are repeatedly going to loop through our expression. So our expression looks like this here, a bunch of T's and F's. We'll continually loop and we will replace things in this string until we are left with only a T or an F. So some of the things that we're going to have to keep track of are parentheses, first of all. So if the parentheses are listed in a collection of letters that means you have to do those first and so you can see that the logical outcome of this is kind of like uh, multiplication and addition in math class you have to do the multiplying first in logic you have to compute the ands before the ors and so in this case we would compute the two f's and we would come up with a false and then we would finally do the true in this case over here though we would compute the or symbol first because it's surrounded by parentheses. The negation character will affect the next character in the list. So for instance, if there is a negation T, that means the opposite of T, or we will replace it with an F. And we will simplify the groups. So if you find something in your string that has a T and an F, we would substitute the logical equivalent, which is just a simple F. So let's get started here. Let's look at the expression that I've got for an example. And we'll use that as some of our example data that we'll work with. There's a few more later on that we'll try out. So first of all, let's get started with making our loop. So we want our loop to keep repeating until the process is done. So we are going to put a while loop in here. And I'm going to use the word true. That means it's an infinite loop. So somewhere in the loop, we're going to have to create a condition to break out of the loop. So the first thing we could do when we start a loop is we could just start asking if we find anything in our uh, expression. So if I, if I went to find this, if I said, if there is a string like a T and an F inside of my uh, string, let's say that would be in the expression, then we would uh, substitute. We could say, um, we could do expression equals a, the expression with a uh, replace command. So I'm going to search for Anytime I have a T and an F, and I'm going to replace it with a logical equivalent, which in this case is a T. No, I'm sorry. True and false gives us a false, so that's an F. Now you notice the uh, spacing that I'm using here. So I'm assuming that my input always gets to have a space before every letter and after every letter. It just makes the assumptions nice for my formatting. So if that's true, then I have found my... Uh, I found a, a, a replacement. So I'm going to uh, set up a variable called found equals true. Now let's assume at the beginning that found equals false. And so that way we can tell after we run some if statements if we found our statements or not. So let's say I have another case I want to search for. So I'm going to copy these three lines and paste them and I'm going to search for a different expression. Let's say, let's search for a true or a false. And so if that's the case, then we will replace true or false. And the logical equivalent on this one will be a true. And then we'll set found to true. Now let's say I have like dozens of different things that I could search for. So I could copy and paste that many times. And then when I finally get to the end, I'm gonna to check to see if we found anything. So if found, or let's say if not found, so that means if uh, we didn't find anything, all the expressions have been done, then we're going to break out of our loop. 
and then finally uh, we would uh, have a final expression. So let's uh, let's do a little bit more uh, data feedback for ourselves. We can say print. Uh, let's say we found T and F, and let's say the new expression is, and let's see, I'm going to add on the word expression. So I could print that each time I go through the loop. So I'm going to copy and paste that line, and let's see if uh, things come out okay there. So let's see, I found true or false. By the way, I'm going to uh, delete this code because you can see it's starting to look repetitive. We're copying and pasting. Anytime you copy and paste, you're probably doing it wrong. So uh, I just want to test to see if my logic is correct though and to see if this will actually run. So I run something and you can see that I've got a problem. So you can see I've, I've put myself into an infinite loop. It's finding something, but it's not doing anything. And if I look back at my code, I can see that I have a typo. I have the word expressions, and I probably meant to say expression. So the variable actually never gets updated. So I'm going to press Control C, and let's try fixing that typo, and then let's see what happens next. So I'll save the work and run it again, and this time, you can see that my uh, expression gets a little bit shorter now. So it says here, I found T and F, and then in the new expressions there, and this one has found T or F, and so what got swapped out? This one here, T or F, got changed into a T. So there we have it, uh, uh, we're just substituting strings. Now I'm going to introduce a better way. So all of this here would work, we could copy and paste if statements all, the, all day, but it gets tedious. Here's a better way. We're going to create a data structure called replacements. And it's going to become a list here. It's called a tuple using brackets. And a tuple in Python is simply groups of things. So I'm going to have one string with a colon followed by another string and then a comma. And those replacements are going to be what we're looking for and what we replace. So in my previous example, let's say I want to have a T and F, and I'm going to replace that with a simple, let's see, true and false becomes a false. And then I might come up with another one. I'll copy that and paste. And this time I'm going to search for true or false. And let's see, true or false gives me a true. I might have to do some replacements such as uh, looking for something in a parenthesis. So a t uh, true inside a parenthesis, that evaluates simply to a T. Uh, you might find others, like if we have a not true, and that would evaluate into a false. So here's your work. You're going to have to decide which tuples are going to make this program work effectively and you have to do them in a certain order. So how would I code that down here? Since I have a list up here and I only want to write the code once, I'm going to do a for loop. I'm going to say for. Let's see. I'm going to make the for loop run over this list and each time I go through the list I'm going to be receiving two variables. I'm going to call one look for and the other one replace with. So I just invented those. And that is found in the list called replacements. And so now I can use a if statement to search for something like say if look for for is in the expression. Then I can do a bunch of things. First of all, I know that I found something. So I'm going to say found is true. And then I'm going to do the replacement. I'm going to say expression equals expression. Uh, and then I'm going to do replace, and I'm searching for look for, and I'm replacing it with, and now I have a new string. I might as well print it out now. I'm going to say uh, print the, uh, let's see, I'm going to put in a, a formatted statement. I'm going to say the current expression is, and then I'm going to use the, uh, the Python numbering system where I can substitute strings in into a, a placeholder. So I'm going to say the current expression is a zero and I'm going to say replaced uh, 
some string with another one. So now after I create that uh, string, I'm going to type the word format and then three variables here. So the placeholder for zero is expression. The replacement on this one is the word uh, look for. And then the last one is uh, replace with. So now I'm going to do a double parentheses. And that should give me an update every time it finds something in my string. Let's see, what else do I need to do? I think that's it. So let's run the program. Let's save it and run it. And let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see I have an error in my code. The uh, line here says, uh, too many values to unpack, expected to. And so I think I've got a problem here in my, uh, my loop, my for loop. So I am looking for two items and I'm searching through this list called replacement. What I forgot to do is put in the uh, dot items uh, command and that will split those up. So now it will know that we want to assign those variables to individual items. There we go. So now you can see the uh, replacement is getting done uh, according to the list that I made. So first it says I replace true and false with false. So it gets shorter. This one here, the uh, parentheses around the true was replaced. I guess that's the next line down. And so I've gotten a few things done correctly. So what I want to leave with you then is to figure out the rest of them. So I've, got, I've given you the uh, syntax for how this program might work. Now you're going to come up with a problem later on. It's going to cause some extra thinking, but you'll get to that. This idea is getting evaluated in the correct order. So you might have to have a replacement list for just the ands and the nots. And then you have to go through the routine again and replace the ors because we want to make sure that the ands are done before the ors. But this is a great place to start. This code here will get you moving. And then when you're done, you'll have a code that will evaluate everything right down to a single letter. It will be true or it will be false. Good luck.